Hi, Martin. I have a question for you. It's a bit of a weird request, but let me explain. Do you think I can have one of your newborn daughter's diaper full of poop? I had to admit, asking for the poop was a really awkward part of the whole process, but it wasn't anywhere near as awkward as what I actually had to do with it. But wait, before we get there, I have to explain to you why I needed the poop in the first place. It all started when I had an awful stomach parasite. All my life, I've had issues with my sensitive stomach. I've always had to be very selective about what I'd eat, or else I'd suffer the consequences later. So you can imagine my annoyance when I found out I had a stomach parasite. You're going to have to take antibiotics. Great, another reason to take antibiotics. Doctors in Thailand generally love to give antibiotics for every situation as they think it will solve everything, whether it's bacterial or viral, like a be-all, end-all medicine. But many people know that taking antibiotics destroys the bacteria in your body, also healthy ones, and if you take it too often, your body can become immune to it. And when you have something really bad, you'll either need a very high dosage or it may not even work anymore. But it doesn't matter. He was right anyway. I have to take antibiotics. A few months later, after I had taken many, many rounds of antibiotics, I finally managed to get rid of the parasite. You would think that my problems would be over, but no. I had even bigger problems now. I was constantly feeling exhausted, and I had lost a ton of weight despite trying to eat. I was pale and skinny and had lost so much color in my face as well. And the worst part of it all was that my stomach was even more sensitive now. I had to be careful what I was eating all the time. I joined my best friend Martin and his wife at a dinner at their house one day. She had cooked an amazing bolognese dish, which had been cooking all day. The smell of the apartment was intoxicating. When I sat down and she was about to serve me my dish, there was nothing else I could do but reject her mouth-watering meal because there was no way my stomach would have been able to digest it. Thank you, but today all I can eat is just white rice. She was confused, but not surprised, as this wasn't the first time I had to reject a delicious meal because of my stomach issues. At the beginning, I didn't know what was going on and why I was feeling this way. I thought it was the side effect of the parasite and that maybe the healing process takes a long time. But after a while, I realized something. I couldn't eat because my stomach had not been digesting any of the food I was eating. I was getting no minerals or nutrients from anything I was consuming. No wonder I was exhausted. My body wasn't absorbing any of the energy I really needed. After that, it was a blur of doctor after doctor and medication after medication. Some I took, some I didn't. Most of the time, they just brushed it off as irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, and told me there was no cure and there was nothing I could do about it. That I would have to live with this for the rest of my life. Others said it was a stomach ulcer, celiac disease, and one doctor even suggested it could be cancer. I felt hopeless, frustrated, and to be honest, quite angry. Imagine if you could never eat anything you love without your stomach causing you pain and discomfort. You can just look at the food you want and salivate thinking about it, but all you'd be able to eat is white rice. I was also always exhausted. It was frustrating. I could never go out and do sports or anything that I wanted to do. Even conversations got really tiring. I'm a very social person that loves food, but I was denied both of those things. I felt like I wasn't living anymore. The thing is, I already kinda knew what 
it could have been. I had been doing so much research, and the only thing that made sense was that it could be because of the many rounds of antibiotics that I had been taking had completely destroyed all of the healthy bacteria that's meant to break down the contents of my stomach and transfer the nutrients to my body. I was drained of energy and I could literally see what I had eaten in the toilet afterwards. The more research I did, the more obvious it became. So I decided to consult a doctor about my new discovery. I told her what I thought it could be, that there was a lack of healthy bacteria in my stomach to break down the food I was eating. So naturally, she gave me probiotics. I really thought this was the moment. But after weeks passed by, nothing got better. Since the conventional way wasn't helping me, I decided I had to try other ways. I found some pretty interesting approaches, but one really caught my eye. I just read about it a little bit, but it was so ridiculous that I laughed when I first read about it. Who in their right mind would do this? I thought. After making a long list of what I could do, I tried it all. First was meditation. Nothing. I meditate on a regular basis anyway, so I already knew this wasn't going to work. I tried some herbal medication. Nope, nothing. Acupuncture, nothing. The longer time went on and the more things I cut off the list, the more attractive and practical that hilarious remedy became. Fecal transplant or fecal microbiota transplantation is when a doctor transplants feces from a healthy donor into another person in order to restore the balance of bacteria in their gut. What happens is the feces is transplanted into the colon and the bacteria travels up your colon, through your intestines, and to your stomach. Yeah, like I said, I thought it was ridiculous at first, but after trying everything else, it kinda made a lot of sense. The thing is, normally, doctors do this, but there were no doctors in Thailand that would do this for me. By the time I exhausted all my other options, my best friend had this beautiful, healthy baby daughter. And that was when the idea came to my head. I don't recommend doing this yourself at home because really, you should check the stool and make sure that the donor doesn't have any hidden problems, even if it is a child. But I was desperate and I knew for certain that her baby poop would be my best option. Serious, what are you going to do with it? Martin replied. Well, I'm going to put it up my butt. What? I guess I should explain. I've already told you that I've lost all the bacteria in my stomach that digests the food I eat in order to give me the nutrients I need. So by transplanting your daughter's feces into my colon, I'm hoping that it will encourage the bacteria up my intestines and repopulate itself in my stomach. Once I explained it to him, he agreed that it made sense and the next day handed me a box of poop. I had the main ingredient. Now I had to prepare for the transplant. I had already gathered up everything I needed before, which was a turkey baster, sterilized water, gloves, lubricant, and researching some interesting yoga poses. Baby poop is generally quite soft, but since I was going to be transplanting it up my colon, the first step for me was to try to soften it up as much as possible. So I mixed it up with sterilized water in a cup. Luckily for me, newborn baby poop doesn't really have any smell. So at least the process wasn't as bad as it could have been. The next step was slightly more complicated, the transplant. I had to get into a position that would provide easy access to the entrance as well as allow the mixture to flow up, or I guess in this position, down, to my stomach. I filled up the turkey baster with the magic concoction, got into position, and proceeded to execute the transplant. I have to admit, it was very awkward. 
Much worse than asking your friend for their newborn baby's poop. I had to stay in position for as long as possible to make sure to get everything in place. I also had to make sure that I had all bowel movements before in order to give the healthy bacteria now in my stomach as much time as it needs to repopulate itself. The longer you can keep it in there before going again, the better. So I managed about six to eight hours, but generally doctors will sedate the patients so they'll sleep through the whole procedure as well as give the body energy to focus on just the healthy bacteria. The first few days or so, nothing had changed, but I already knew that it could take a couple weeks in order for it to see if the procedure worked or not. But after about two weeks, I could already start seeing some gradual differences. My stomach started feeling better. I was able to digest better and better every day. My stool had less and less food in it. And the best part of it all was that I was starting to get my energy back. As time went on, I felt better and better. It worked so well that I decided to do it again, just to make sure I gave my body all the healthy bacteria it needed. Plus, I figured that normally, doctors would order more than one treatment, so it made sense for me to do it one more time. It was a little less awkward the second time. Still not really a pretty sight, but hey, definitely worth it for me. Now, I'm much better. Not 100%, but I'd say about 95%, and I couldn't be happier. We don't recommend doing this at home. There are many medical facilities that offer this treatment and can assist you professionally. 